Hey guys, it's Sonara. In this video, I'll be talking about the 10 most important things to know starting out in Throne and Liberty. The first thing on the list are trait unlock stones. I'd recommend saving these until you absolutely need them for best in slot gear and you don't have duplicate gear to unlock your second and third traits. The reason why they're so important to save is because they're very limited. The ways to acquire them is from the weekly mission rewards, which are located over here. And if you don't get any pieces of gear you need, you have an option, which will appear down here at the end of the week, to take 25 trait unlock stones. Next option are from mystic portals, which are RNG spawns from mystic globes, which are located around the world that need mystic keys to unlock. I'll talk about mystic keys later in the video. The ones from the battle pass, which if you go over to the battle pass over here, and you can view the rewards, you get a few from the free, and you get a bunch more if you pay for the battle pass. I'll also talk about the battle pass more later in the video. Lastly, the way to obtain them is from the lithograph book. If you scroll all the way down here, you can see the various options that you can use to feed purple gear that you don't need into the lithograph book to then get trait unlock stones. The second thing you'll want to look out for are contracts. These become available before level 50, but you don't want to do them beforehand. Only do what's required for the main story. You'll save these for level 50 as the lower level contracts give less material. You'll want to prioritize different materials dependent on your needs. Rare polished crystals are good all around. Yellow ore are for armor stones. Red ore are for weapon stones. Green ore are for accessory stones. Blue ore are for active and passive skill books. There's also blue parchment, which also are used for skill books. The last thing to look out for and always prioritize are contracts that reward precious blessing pouches. The last thing to note about contracts in general is you get 10 every day, can hold a max of 60, and you can add to said contract with a scroll that's bought with star crystal from the battle pass. Once you level it all the way up, you can go to the Zenus' star shop, and then you scroll over here, you can buy them here, and you can buy them here. I'm not sure if they'll give us more after this 20 days or if these will be gone forever. So try and get these as soon as possible. Next are dungeons. Dungeons are in the same cautionary genre as contracts. You get 900 dungeon tokens every day. And if you open up the chest at the end of the dungeon after defeating the boss, you can spend 300 tokens to earn various materials and gear. Something to note is that if you don't open the chest, you do not spend the points and you do not get the gear. However, you can continuously and endlessly run dungeons with your friends to get polished crystals from any of the mini bosses at a chance. Each dungeon has different pieces of gear you want to target based on your class and needs. The rewards can be found here after clicking on each dungeon dungeon and hovering over the pieces of gear. Just like contracts, you don't want to use your dungeon tokens before hitting 50 as the rewards from beforehand are worse. Next, let's talk about the vendors which give important daily and weekly items. First is the Sundries Merchant. From here, you'll want to pick up the two sets of weekly blue contract scrolls to run every week. Every day, you'll want to pick up the eggs, honey, and most importantly, the golden rye. All of these will be used for cooking. Next is the guild merchant. From here, you'll want to pick up the daily mana regen potions, the queen venom neutralizer, health potions, precious material chest, rare polished crystal, and precious polished crystal. For the weekly limits, you always want to pick up the trait conversion stones as these are important for rerolling traits on gear. If you have enough guild tokens, picking up the, the rare material chest every day that you have enough extra is fine as well. Lastly is the contract coin vendor. Here you'll want to pick up the daily mystic keys, the fishing baits, and precious blessing pouch. For the weekly limit, You'll want to pick up the enchanted ink for making lithographs to sell for lucent on gear you don't want or won't use. If you have extra coins, picking up the extraction stones, rare parchment, or precious ore is fine as well. Next, let's talk about cooking. Cooking is important for things like healthy milk for mana regen and other buffs for PvP, bossing, and PvE. You'll want to level up cooking as soon as possible. That way you can get buffs to better your weapon masteries and solid gain on top of better stats while bossing, grinding, and PvPing. Some of those buffs, like healthy milk, include crab meat pie and golden apple pie. 
Some materials you may want to prioritize going out into the open world and grinding for are rye, honey, salt, rotein, golden apples, scorpion tails, and sea crab nipper and hermit crab tail. If you don't mind spending some money on the game, the battle pass and leveling log are great ways to get extra materials. You can even get extra mats for cooking, extra buffs, conversion stones, extraction stones, contract rights, and solent by spending the star crystal that you see here in the menu from the battle pass as well, which in my opinion is worth it for the money spent. If you look over here, you can see the leveling log which also gives some materials just simply by leveling up and also doing things in the open world. Next up, let's talk about ornate coins. Ornate coins can be obtained from Twitch drops, compensation in the mail, and from discovering books out in the open world. These are very limited, so you'll want to spend them wisely. The most important things to max out every month if possible are the precious blessing pouches and the enchanted ink. After that, you'll want to take what you need in terms of priority, whether that be armor stones, weapon stones, accessory stones, skill books, so be it. Next, let's talk about pitying pieces of gear from regular dungeons, open world dungeons, and world bosses. From regular dungeons, you'll get 4 shards related to the boss of that dungeon every time you spend dungeon tokens. From open world dungeons, you'll get 1 abyss currency every time you complete a contract for an open world dungeon. On top of that, you'll also get a precious pouch related to that dungeon as well. There are different pity options available from the senior merchants in Stoneguard. They include spending 40 or or 80 abyss currency for a guaranteed piece of gear, one or two salvation tokens for a guaranteed piece of gear. Those are crafted with 10 of each of the six dungeon boss shards. Another option for the regular dungeons are spending 80 of a single type of boss shard for a guaranteed piece of gear. Then there's resistance metals, which you get from world bosses, and these can be used to craft heroic resistance gear of your choice. These are all very good ways to consistently gear up without having to spend money on the game. Next, let's talk about transferring EXP from gear to higher grade gear. From green to blue, there's not much to worry about in terms of being efficient, so you can just transfer a level 6 green item into a level 0 blue item to get a level 3 blue item. When transferring from blue to purple gear, this is when you'll want to be as efficient as you can, since the mats become more and more scarce and you'll have to farm more if you're not efficient with them. Feeding a level 9 blue item into a level 0 purple item will get you a level 6 purple item. But the best way to level up purple gear is to get your purple item to level 7 and around 40% and then transferring your level 9 blue item into it. This way, it'll save you quite a bit on material, weapon stones, armor stones, accessory stones, dependent on which you're upgrading. And you can only transfer EXP once per item, so be warned. And also something to note is that you can only transfer gear of the same type, so a necklace you have to feed into a necklace or from a necklace, belts and belts, rings and rings, etc, etc. Lastly, there's the Amatoy House. This is an important part of daily activities that will yield a ton of materials for gear and cooking. Not much to explain other than you want to target the regions which give the mats you want or need the most. Send multiple Amatoy per expedition and I always choose the 8 hour expeditions as they seemingly yield the highest and most consistent amount of materials. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll be making more in-depth guides on several of the topics success discussed in this video, so stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe. I'll see you all next time.